I'm taking out backpacks full or buckets full, uh, garbage bags full of ramps. At many of our sites, we've seen people actively removing them. It's become quite trendy and everybody wants ramps. And unfortunately for the ramp populations, we have no idea what that means. I saw them this year at uh, East End Food Co-op in Pittsburgh going for $19.99 a pound. When ramps grow, they develop from a seed and they develop much like an onion where they just kind of produce one little single wispy, almost grass-like top for a number of years. So the first thing is obvious maybe at a site like this, which is pe people should not be digging ramps unless there's a lot of them. Because, you know, while they're a wild onion, they're a bit unusual in the sense that they take many years to develop from seed. So typically when a seed germinates for a ramp, you're looking at maybe three to as many as seven years for it to reach anything that then starts to clone itself. And that's basically a size for harvesting. It takes typically about 10 years to recover from a 10% removal. They can reproduce sexually by producing flowers and seed, or they can produce asexually by bulb division, right? And so when they produce asexually, what that means is every offshoot of that original plant is gonna have the same DNA, okay? So it's essentially a clone of itself. Now, when they reproduce sexually, it mixes up the genes and we get diversity. And that's important because when people come in and if they're digging a lot, that could stress the population. And there's other types of threats to the population, like there's an invasive insect that has recently been found in Pennsylvania called the Allium leaf miner, right? So if the population has a lot of genetic diversity, it will be more likely to be able to, you know, overcome those novel threats. Here's an example of how they clone and yet they're attached to this basal plate which has roots coming off of it. So I broke some of the roots off. So this has a fibrous root system. It comes off of a little woody plate down here. And then one plant becomes two. So you can see there's a little brown sheath here. I'll pull it off with my fingers. That's the remnants of what used to be the leaf sheath when these plants were maybe one plant, right? So it divides. What'll happen is like this one's getting so big that it's starting to form probably, it takes a couple of years for this to fully happen. It's forming a partition or a wall in there as it's starting to kind of make two plants. You should never be harvesting individual plants in my opinion. You should always be looking for those nice clumps and then you should be thinking about just removing a couple of the bulbs from that clump. And that's, you know, sustainability 101, right? So you're taking one and you're maybe leaving two behind on that plate. Uh, that's going to promote regrowth and cloning much more quickly, quickly than anything. And essentially, that's what you want to hopefully, you know, push the most because from seed, it's going to take five, six years, seven years to actually generate a bulb. So you want to maintain nice, large clones that are actually going to peel off and multiply. And it was fine when you would just go in in the spring and harvest for your own family and friends. But when you're, you know, selling to Whole Foods and selling to these other grocery stores or selling to restaurants in New York City, um, it really changes the game.